Greetings and welcome to part two of our oboe series using essential elements. This is going to focus on the oboes only pages, uh, page 4a and 5a. Okay, so you notice your book for the first few pages is split. One side says oboes only, the other side says full band. So we're going to start off with the oboes only and then we're going to go back with uh, subsequent videos and go through the full band. Okay, the reason we have two sections here is the oboe's only is a little easier to, to play when you're just getting started on the oboe, but the full band is the note you're gonna need if you're playing this with an ensemble, okay? If you play the oboe's only part with the full band, your notes are different than everybody else's. So uh, that's why we're gonna do it that way. Okay, so we're looking at page 4A in your Essential Elements book. <clears throat> the very talk, uh, top, it talks about the long tone. So exactly that, you play a long tone, then you stop. So number one is called the first note, note C. Okay, so you notice in the orange box, you have a C, that's what it's called. We know it's a C, not just because it says C in the note, uh, in the note head, but because of your, your staff, right? You ever learn the space face, F-A-C-E, so the, in between the lines on the musical staff is F-A-C-E, spells face, F-A-C-E, space face. You also have the lines, every good boy deserves fudge, or every good boy does fine, empty garbage before dad freaks, every girl break dances Friday, E-G-B-D-F, Elephants get bad diarrhea frequently. <sighs> Could use that too. Okay, to remember, you know, same as recorder. Um, <clears throat> so since C is on the third space, F-A-C. Okay, notes that are on the lines will have a line running through it, which we'll see soon. Notice that next to the C you have a picture of the oboe. These are the keys you're going to use. And the first, uh, if a hole is black and in, it means you press it. If it is white, it means you don't press it. So for C... You're going to take your left hand, and you're going to put it on this key right here. All right, use your full finger there, and then you're going to put on your lower hand. You see there's a little bar on that picture? That's this thing right here, okay, the joint of the two uh, pieces. You're going to put your other, your first finger right here, okay? All righty. <clears throat> it's going to sound like this. sound of the gods. Or a dying duck. Uh, so that's a C. Two fingers right there. So number one, we're going to play a long C. Rest for a second, play another long C. We're going to play the reed just like we did the crow in the, the last episode. Again, you're going to put it, put your lips together like you're whistling. But roll your lips in a little bit more so they're covering your teeth. Make a nice cushion for that reed. That tip. Mmm. We don't want to go all the way in like this. Okay, just enough. Also, when you're playing the oboe, you want to have it out a little bit. We don't want to go like this, like a clarinet. Clarinets are, are more downward. You guys are more, really, almost like following the line of your nose. All right, here's some more. We're going to play an F, uh, an F, a C, then we're going to rest, we're going to play another C. Ready, go. Now another one. Underneath that, it says, it talks about the beat. It says, the beat is the pulse of music, and like your heartbeat, it should remain very steady. Okay? Beat can be fast. It can be slow. But it's got to be steady. Okay? Uh, it also talks about notes and rests. We have quarter notes, which are beats of sound, and quarter rests, which are beats of silence. All right, so you can see a picture of those right there. Look at number two in your book, Count and Play. You have four quarter note Cs, so you're going to make a beat. And then you have four quarter rests, so you'll be silent during those. Then you have four more Cs, then you have four more rests. So let's try this. Number two. Ready, and... Number three, a new note is note B flat. That little symbol next to the B in the orange box, that little B, is actually a flat symbol. Notes can be sharp, flat, or natural. This one's flat. So look at the, uh, the fingering there. So it's like your C, except now you're going to add this finger right here. Not this little guy, this one, the one with a little hole on it. Okay, sounds like this. 
Let's play that together. A new note, number three. Ready, go. And another one. Ready, um. Number four is to as a team. You have four quarter note B flats, four rests, and then four C's. Let's try that one. Ready, um. Two, three, then C. Two, three, four. Oh, there's four rests. Number five heading down is A. It's the same as your B flat, except you're gonna remove this finger. So it's just these two. Ready, go. Rest for a second, and another one. If you find the notes aren't coming out, it could be a couple things. Maybe you're playing the wrong keys, or maybe you're actually pressing this side key, or the thumb key, or this side key, or any other number of side keys. Okay, so be careful that you're only pressing the, the notes that you want. Notice how this hand, my fingers are angled upward. Okay, notice that this hand, again, me nice, rounded, curved fingers. Mm. Okay, because you're gonna be, I like to think of oboe as spider fingers. You need nice, long fingers like a spider. I guess those are legs. Notice that A is on the second space, which is why it's an A. Notice that the B flat in number three is on the third line. Every good boy does fine, which is why that's an uh, B. Uh, number six, moving on up, we start off with five A's. Then we rest for three beats, two more A's, and then two B flats, and then a C. Turn the page now. We're going to go to page 5A. So it's oboes only 5A. So at the top of the page, it talks about a double bar. So a double bar indicates the end of a piece of music, it means you're done. It also has a repeat sign. It's a double bar with two little dots on it. That means play it again. So number seven, you have a double bar. So we're just going to play it once. It's note G, kind of like on your recorder, right? So here was your A. Now add the next cir circle key with a dot. Okay, that one, two, three. That is G. Let's play it. And then another one. Number eight, four by four. Notice at the end of this one, you have a repeat sign, the double bar and the double dots. Starting on note G. Let's give it a whirl. my notes are fairly clean for, for an oboe. So what I'm doing is I'm using this thing called tonguing or articulation. While I'm playing, I'm keeping my air going, but I'm using my tongue to separate the notes. It's very, very lightly tapping the, or this part of the reed right here. Not like this, not like this, but like, I'm going to do this, like this. Okay? Very lightly. Almost like saying ta, 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 ta. Two is a little high for me, but we're like a t -t 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 -t. We'll get to that sound. If you just do what I call huffing the air attack, it's a G would sound like this. And it looks like a fish, okay? Um, so that tonguing keeps the air moving, gives you a much better tone. So I would encourage you to be trying that. Also, also just playing the mouthpiece or your uh, your reed and doing that too is very helpful. Number nine is touchdown. That's an F. All right, so let's go through this. So your G was this, one, two, three. F, you're gonna add that first circle key that we used for C. Uh, and then you're gonna add the next circle with the dot key. And then you're gonna add the hot dog key. So circle, circle, hot dog. Yummy. <laughs> Let's 
play another one. If it sounds like this, then you're too you're um, biting down too hard on on the reed. Okay, so you need to be much lighter. Try to keep like um, imagine trying to fit a ping pong ball or uh, or a tennis ball if your mouth is big uh, in your mouth while you're playing. Keeping that cavity nice and open is going to give you a nice rounded tone. If you're too scrunched up in there, too firm, it's not going to give you. It's going to be very nasally, like a duck. I like ducks. My daughter loves ducks, um, but not for open. Uh, number 10, the Fab Five, we're using the five notes we learned, F, G, C, B flat, and A, and it is repeated. Rest, rest, rest. Rest, rest, repeat. Rest, rest. Rest. Rest, rest, rest. Underneath is another orange box. It talks about a treble clef. So the treble clef indicates the notes on the staff. The reason why every good boy does fine and the space face works for notes for you is because you have a treble clef. If you played tuba or trombone or baritone, it wouldn't work. They have something else called a bass clef. Totally different notes. You also have what's called a time signature. It says it indicates how many beats per measure. What is a measure? A box of music. Notice number 10, if you go back to the Fab Five, you have four things in every box, right? It'd be F, 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 F is in a box. Then G, rest, rest, rest is in a box. C, C, B flat, B flat is in a box. A, rest, 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 rest is a box. Okay, those are measures. Helps us organize music in a certain number of beats. Four, four time, we always look at the top number. Don't worry about the bottom number right now. The top number tells you how many beats are in every box of music. So in this case, uh, there's going to be four. Okay, if that number, if it was three over four, there would be three beats in every measure. Okay, but for now, you're just in four. Don't worry about it. Anything else. You don't even have a time signature until a couple belts away. Um, you also have, it talks about the sharp, flat, and natural, which we, we touched on briefly. Uh, so it says, uh, sharp, basically what you need to know about the sharp, flat, and natural is that it changes the note. Okay, so you may have an E, you may have, which is an E natural, you may have an E flat, you may have any sharp. Okay, so an E or an E natural is right in the middle. Sharp makes it a little higher. Sharp makes it sound a little lower. They're all different notes. Okay, and we'll talk about when, when you're going to use each one soon. Okay, um, looking at uh, also in that chart, you have a note names chart. So you can use that to, if you're uh, not sure of a particular note. Uh, looking at 11, 12, and 13 in your book, this is where I would encourage you to write your notes in. Um, right now you're trying to just figure out like jumping. It's not a very intuitive instrument, like how do you go from C and add a finger and then you subtract a finger and then you add three, three fingers. So right now just worry about trying to get a, a decent sound and getting the fingers down. I would encourage you to write your notes in for just this and then the, the white belt and maybe the yellow belt. Okay. Uh, beyond that, I would encourage you not to write your notes in because then it will get too hard because you'll have too many of a certain kind of note. You won't know if it's B flat, B sharp, B natural, how long to play it. So write them in for now, but not later. So I would encourage you 11, 12, 13, write those in now if you haven't already, and then I'm going to go through them for you as well. So if you want to, pause, and I'm back. Here's number 11, reading the notes. The notes are F, 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 G, rest, rest, rest. C, C, B flat, B flat, A, rest, rest, repeat. Number 12, uh, actually we'll do it one at a time. So here's number 11, we'll play it. Rest, rest, rest. Rest, rest, repeat. Rest, rest, rest. Rest, rest, rest. Number 12, the notes are A, A, G, G, F, F, F. Rest. C, C, B flat, B flat, A, G, F. Repeat. Here's number 12. Number 
13, the essential elements quiz, they gave you the first three notes, F, G, A, B flat, C, 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 rest, A, B flat, A, G, F, A, F, repeat. fine you want to take those nice breaths but sometimes you may find you have too much air because that's a lot of air to get through this little space so you may find that instead of breathing in you may spend some time breathe you breathe in and then you breathe out a little bit then breathe in um, so breathe as you need to if you have too much air breathe out use up some more and then breathe in uh, and we'll talk more about that in subsequent videos I'm sure all right so that is our introduction um, to playing the oboe the next video is going to start focusing on the white belt for band karate We'll see you next time.